There's the GT Pro over there. Here is the 1250 GES. Let's do a little experiment as to which one feels heavier pulling off hmm, the kickstand. So let's go down, unload suspension, sit, pull off. Not bad. Now let's do the same to the GT Pro sitting over here. I cannot. Let's do it. Unload. Load up. Pull off. Uh, for the life of me, I cannot tell the difference, guys. <laughs> they feel the same. Hi, guys. Nothing to prove here. Today's a beautiful day because any day one can be on two wheels is a beautiful day. And yeah, today we're taking the 1200 Tiger out, the GT Pro. Yeah, Triumph made all new this year. What is it, new motor? The motor's got that T-plane crank, so that uneven firing order, new frame, new shaft, new swing arm, all dropping weight of about 20 kilos. Yeah, you're starting at the base platform or base weight of 240 kilos say what 240 kilos yeah let's take a look what the competition is doing shall we i have these here arranged by weight and where is this tiger sitting right there right next to the multistrada v4 at the base weight too right there at 240. this model here is the gt pro the pro is 240 Five, gains five kilos now if you take a look say wow I didn't know the Africa twin didn't weigh very much there neither did I you take a look at it but that's the base model you start adding things and weight goes from there but what is the benchmark for this group now and has been for the last three decades four decades 40 years yeah, that's all, almost down at the bottom. The only thing heavier than the GS at 249 is the Versus 1000. Yeah, so now the heavyweight of the BMW is due, hopefully next year, hopefully next year they will come out with the updated version, the next gen, the 1300. So let's see if they lose a little weight because BMW is starting to look a little portly here in this group now now with that said this tank filled up this is a 20 liter tank and you can see the power here where is it not too bad with the power not too bad in torque either it's right up there with some of the big dogs it's almost there but it's still behind yeah of course it's behind the gs so how does this powertrain feel on the street now on the Autobahn here, I have the windscreen in the low position and I'm catching a lot of buffeting on my helmet. Oh yeah. And uh, it's all this traffic too. Uh, but let's bring the windscreen up. There. How's that? Mm -hmm. I do notice a difference. Not a lot though. But... Uh, is it satisfactory or normal for your adventure group? Yeah, I would say so. This is about par with the windscreen up. How is the vibration in the foot pegs? Yeah, I can feel it. It's a, it's a lot more than on a GS. Uh, Africa Twin would be less too. Now the speed limit is picking up here. Let's see if this BMW will get on. Oh, no, let's just roll on. Oh, not bad. Not bad. Okay. Yeah, you can just roll. I, I, I think the 1250GS has a little more pull. Uh, at least it feels like it. Let's try it again. Yeah. I think GS would pull on this, would pull away from this. Okay, now let's drop her down a little bit. 
So just rolling on, staying in six gear, I think the GS will take this. Now let's go down to three. There we go. Okay, so that's the secret on the Autobahn for this bike is, is you gotta drop a gear or two or three. In that case, I dropped three. Uh, the GS maybe one or two. Here you gotta drop two or three. That's the difference between the two bikes. This speed at 4,000 RPMs, it you'll never keep up with a GS. If you're keep matching RPM for RPM on a 1250 GS, a GS will just walk away from you. You need to be about two grand higher in the RPMs to keep up with a GS. So you say, well, that's a little more work and shifting. Yeah, okay. The quick shifter's better than a GS. So there you go. That's why Triumph nailed the quick shifter. It's because <laughs> now, 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 vibration in the foot pegs. Yes, I feel it. Handlebars, nah, I, I really don't. Okay, there a little bit. I really don't notice it that much. Uh, but here, let's let's drop a gear or two. There, now I feel it. Once you get to five, but but let's say you're a normal person and you're you're doing this speed at, at 3,000 RPMs. Okay, I feel it a little more in the right peg than the left peg. Unbe <laughs> unbelievably, <laughs> that's funny. But almost nothing in the handlebars here. So vibration. Yeah, it's more than a GS in the bars and the foot pegs. Okay, now I'm in road mode. So the quick shifter, I've noticed there's a difference between sport and road. At 30% throttle, let's do a roll on. Oh, beautiful. This quick shifter in road mode loves it at 30% throttle. Now let's do... Still nobody behind me. Let's, I don't know if I can do how much full throttle with these curves coming up. Let's try it. <laughs> okay, uh, in road mode, it wants to be not at full throttle with the quick shifter. Now, let's change to sport. There we go. Now let's do sport road. Still nobody behind me at 30% throttle. Cool. Okay, a little, it does not like 30% throttle in sport mode at 30%. Now let's try <laughs> sport mode at full throttle. Here's a stretch. Very good. Okay, now still nobody behind me. Okay, let's roll on. loves this much better <laughs> oh yeah okay so in road mode it likes a more gentle quick shifting the quick shifter now and then in sport mode it only like it loves full throttle and it but it's not so gentle below that I would say 30 to 50 percent or 50 percent or below it does not like it's clunky see look at that it's Clunky, let me go back to road mode. But here, uh, you know, let's stay here on the powertrain. But here in sport mode, the throttle is, is a little snatchy, just a little bit. On the on off, well, that's pretty good though. When you're aggressive, if you're riding like a normal human being, <laughs> It's it's a little aggressive, a little snatchy, a little too quick, this abrupt. That's the word I'm looking for. So overall, it depends. And, and Triumph have gotten the throttle snatchiness and the quick shifter to match road mode or sport mode. Just depends on what mode, mood you're in. Just switch back and forth if you change. <laughs> that's good. I appreciate that, Triumph. Good job. And that's why this engine, this powertrain, is getting two thumbs up from me. Boom, boom.
chassis let's come up here you can see the wires going in there and over there this is the semi-active Showa suspension and if you look down here yeah it does say show it right behind there this is 200 mils of travel the rally would be to 20 on 320 mil discs with Brembo 430 style Lima you can know their style Lima by the hole right there uh, and then coming to the back again the electronic suspension there and here is where you see this double-sided swing arm which is new and this helped save weight actually on a big 282 disc with a one piston yeah it's one yeah the the uh, pot is empty back there now how does this all new chassis all new suspension and these brakes feel on the street this road is so bumpy here beautiful old church here old castle and the ruins over there yeah. oh it's beautiful now it's a kindergarten <laughs> Uh, but the nice thing about this suspension in road mode, now I'm in road mode, I'm not in sport, is it's, it's turning this, this bumpy road into an actual fun, joyful experience. I'm really surprised. Now, how is that rear brake? Oh, yeah. Oh, loving that rear brake. Oh, that's great. And the front? Nice. Oh, beautiful. Nice job on the Style Lima's Triumph getting them to work with your ABS system boom boom the brakes are awesome no problems uh, Ducati had a problem with that on their V4 Multistrada I didn't uh, and the V2 uh, Ducati needs to fix that on both of those the front brake and the rear brake getting it to work can be a little tricky with the ABS system uh, but Triumph you've got it uh, BMW you got it on the GS too though so so as far as the brakes is good now the suspension in robo the, the, in road mode sorry guys is awesome it's soaking up these bumps you can i i specifically went down this portion or this road hello uh, to see how this suspension is going to react and you can hear it in my voice normally you could hear there it is a little bit uh but these show us these semi-active showas are doing an awesome job and they're it it might even be a little bit better than a 1250 gs <laughs> yeah i never thought i would say that <laughs> uh but yeah overall this chassis this new frame new swing arm new shaft everything the brakes they gel they work well together and that's a magic trick Yes, put good components on a bike, but make them work. Two thumbs up, Triumph. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Let's continue on with the rest of this bike. You can see the traditional high mount muffler there, adventure bike muffler. 850 mils off the ground, and you can see there's a little room here. Yeah, this will go up another 20 mils to 870. I do like this little jump here for the step up for the passenger good space good comfortable seat and yes believe it or not guys i can flat foot this both feet are now on the ground at the 850 870 i would probably be a little i'd be on the balls of my feet though this tank filled up because this is the, not the gt it's the gt pro is five more kilos so this is 245 kilos how does those kilos feel in the street? Oh, it looks like they're going to have a shoots of fest. <laughs> uh, okay, now the speed limit's 30. So let's be in first gear going uphill here. Not too bad. Okay, there. Oh, there. Did you hear that? Watch. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm trying to find it though guys and I'm in road mode so it's the gentle mapping and and throttle so the on off is just here now I'm going downhill on off okay now let's try this in second gear though let's see okay that's a little better in second gear with the on off I'm trying to find it it's a lot better uh, it's acceptable the GS is better though hmm. Unfortunately, the Honda Africa Twin is better. 
I would say that. Uh, but this riding position is straight up. I am straight up. You can swivel your head all the way around like an owl if you want. If you were. <laughs> So, and the, the in-town manors here, in this tiny little village with this obstacle course on the road, you can just go boom, boom, and it's not a problem whatsoever to avoid anything. So, in town, yeah, I, I would recommend this in town. Two thumbs up, boom, boom. Coming up to the controls and the display, standard Triumph with this uh, joystick that's real close to the turn signal there. And then, yeah, your standard controls over here. I just turned it on. You can see there, it's gonna come up here right now. Yeah, there we go. She's gonna come up seven inch TFT, like in the dark background. Uh, it is kind of fuddly to go back and forth to the different modes. You can see me working with the joystick here to go back and forth to the different ride modes. So if I go back up to road and then select there, it'll come back. Um, but overall, I do like the TFT. It's a little, it's not so intuitive, but once you get used to it, it's, you got to do a few extra things to change from sport to road mode, for example. Whereas on the BMW, it's just one, you just toggle. No, no, no. And then you just lead it, roll off the throttle and you're done. You don't really need to look. Uh, this you really got to pay attention to what it does and what you're doing and where and how. Like there, I'm trying to shut it off. There, just shut it off. Hey, it's a triumph. <laughs> it's finicky. It's uh, delicate. It's, uh, you got to do, you know, you got to scratch your head and rub your belly at the same time sometimes to get it to do what you want it to do. Uh, with that said, how is it overall, guys? You saw me pause there. Like the fit and finish is not quite so good. Here it's nice and tight, and then here it gets loose. Here it's tight right here and, and then loose here, whereas on this side it's just the opposite. Uh, and then little things, for example, let me walk around here. Look it up in here. This, look at how loose this is along with this. I don't know how long stuff like that is really going to last in the long run on a big adventure do all adventure tour so um i do like it though it's getting two thumbs up if i said okay let's go to the verdict would you buy a 1250 gs or this which one would you buy i take the 1250 gs all day long um, this is getting close the gs is just a little more refined uh, the foot peg vibration in this. I don't know if I would want to do a weekend long trip with that. I would have to get off and walk around occasionally. The handlebar vibrations, not bad at all. Cannot complain. I will not complain about that. It's minimalistic, just like in a GS. It's very minimalistic. Uh, but overall, guys, I do like this bike. Triumph has come a long way. You guys see me thinking I'm trying not to be too brutal, but yet still be honest as to my personal preference. And that's what it is, guys. If you guys love this bike, there goes another guy on a bike. He's having fun. Uh, get it. Will you be happy with it? Oh, yeah. If I bought this, I would be happy with it. Oh, yeah. Two thumbs way, way up. All right, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this review as always. Ride safe, that's the most important on the list. And number two, guys, ride like there's nothing to prove. Take care. Cheers.